The Fall of Lucifer, by Ray Sullivan. We know a little bit about the fall of Lucifer, from Revelation chapter 12, which talks about how a war in heaven broke out between the good angels. But is there more to this story? Venerable Mary of Agreda, in her masterpiece book, The Mystical City of God, does indeed fill in some of the blanks into this mysterious tale. Sister Mary of Agreda was a 17th century Spanish nun who had many visions of heaven and the afterlife. She is even said to have appeared in the southwestern United States to teach Indians the faith. While her writings are a private revelation and are not part of the deposit of faith, in my opinion, they are genuine. This book does have an imprimatur. There are just too many details to be made up. Creation Her story begins with the creation of the world, as told in Genesis. According to her, the earth was created with space for hell and purgatory in the middle of it. As it is, the middle of the earth is indeed full of fiery molten rock and lava, i.e., a lake of fire. At the moment God said, let there be light. There was heavenly light, or the creation of the angels, who reflect the light of God. In the first instant of their creation, all of the angels were endowed with beauty, intellect, will, and numerous other graces, according to the will of God. Each angel was given different gifts from every other angel. In the case of Lucifer, he had the greatest intellect and the most beauty. He marveled at himself, and attributed all of his gifts to himself, instead of coming from God. In other words, pride set in almost immediately. In the second instant, God told the angels that they were to worship him and serve him. The good angels immediately did so, out of reverence and awe of Almighty God. Lucifer and many other angels initially did this too, but only out of a sense of duty, and not because they really wanted to. Thus, the seed was sown for rebellion. Lucifer's rebellion. God then told the angels that he was going to create a lower form of life, humans, and that the angels were to assist man in all of his endeavors. And not only that, but God was going to become one of them, and they were to also worship and adore him in his human form, just as they now adore him in his spiritual form. This was just too much for Lucifer to take. He was not about to serve and to help out a lower form of life than himself, and he certainly wasn't going to adore one of them, even if that man was God himself. He demanded that if there was to be a union between divinity and man, that it be him, and not God. He induced many other angels to follow his rebellion, promising them that he would set up his own kingdom apart from God's. He was not about to be a part of God's family, whose purpose was to serve God and man and to love him and his creation. A Heavenly Vision Then, to make matters worse for Lucifer, a great sign appeared in heaven at that time, which was the same one that St. John saw in the book of Revelation. A woman clothed with the sun appeared, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. God explained to the angels that this was to be his future earthly mother, one more pure and holy than any of the angels. He explained that he was to come into the world through her virgin womb, and the angels were to also serve her and be subject to her, their queen. At this point, Lucifer spouted blasphemy after blasphemy at the Lord, pledging to destroy the human race, and persecuting this woman, and destroying her position in heaven. This aroused the anger of God, who then told Lucifer that this woman would crush his head, and through her, he would be vanquished. God knew that Lucifer's great pride would be more wounded by being overcome by a lowly female human, than by him, Almighty God. He said that any man or woman on earth who spiritually assumed, to the best of their ability, the nature of the incarnate word and this woman would take the seats of Lucifer and his followers in heaven. God allowed all of the angels to see the many graces he had bestowed upon this woman, and how he would work through her to do so many wonderful things. The good angels were in loving awe, but this infuriated the bad angels even more, who then vowed to destroy the human race. Sister Mary compared the vision of the woman clothed with the sun to the rainbow, which was a sign of the promise to never flood the world again. She says that the woman represents the race of human beings, and therefore God will not punish mankind in the same unforgiving manner as he punished the angels. In other words, if mankind sins, they will be allowed to regain the graces that they lost, through the grace from God flowing through the holiness of the woman, the Blessed Virgin Mary. The crown of twelve stars on the woman's head in the book of Revelation not only represents Israel, the twelve tribes, and the church, the twelve apostles, but also the twelve virtues of Mary, innocence, simplicity, humility, patience, obedience, love for God, charity, contempt for the world, purity, silence, 
meekness, and modesty. The crescent moon, which represents the darkness of sin, is under her feet, while she is clothed with the sun, the symbol of grace. The 1260 days that the Bible describes as her time spent protected in the desert is actually the amount of time Mary was in total solitude receiving unlimited graces from God, thus preserving her from the stain of sin for even one second. Conversely, Sister Mary says that the seven heads of the dragon described in Revelation chapter 12 are the seven deadly sins, lust, greed, envy, anger, pride, gluttony, and sloth. The ten horns of the dragon represent the triumphs of the iniquity and malice of the dragon, and the vain and arrogant glorification and exaltation which he attributed to himself in the execution of his wickedness. The tail of the dragon represents the false promises and phony friendship of Lucifer to the apostate angels, and which swept them out of heaven into the middle of the earth, aka hell. She then explains that the pain of the woman, travailing in birth, was not birth pangs, but rather, Mary crying aloud for what was going to happen to her son, namely, the crucifixion. Since Mary was born without sin, she was free from the curse of Eve, i.e., birth pangs. Other theologians suggest that these birth pangs also represent Mary's pain in interceding for us, the rest of her children, who prefer sin over Jesus much of the time. The word, travail, doesn't always mean, birth pangs, and is used in other places in the Bible as a euphemism for the world awaiting the acceptance of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in travail together until now. 23 and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. War in Heaven. The war described in Revelation chapter 12 then commenced, with Michael and the good angels defeating Lucifer and the bad angels. According to Sister Mary, the following conversation took place between Lucifer and Michael. Lucifer said, Unjust is God in raising the human nature above the angelic. I am the most exalted and beautiful angel and the triumph belongs to me. It is I who am to place my throne above the stars and who shall be like unto the highest. I will subject myself to no one of an inferior nature, and I will not consent that anyone take precedence of me or be greater than I. Who is there like unto the Lord, who dwells in the heavens, or who to compare himself to him? Be silent, enemy, cease thy dreadful blasphemies, and since iniquity has taken possession of thee, depart from our midst, wretch, and be hurled in thy blind ignorance and wickedness into the dark night and chaos of the infernal pains. But let us, O spirits of the Lord, honor and reverence this blessed woman, who is to give human flesh to the eternal word, and let us recognize her as our queen and lady. The bad angels were then defeated and were hurled into hell, into the middle of the earth. Sister Mary then details a meeting that Lucifer had with his followers. In this meeting, Lucifer lays out the plan for the destruction of the woman who God had said would crush his head, and also of mankind, to his demon followers. He vowed to create many false sects and religions which would lead mankind away from God. He said that he would raise up many bold and arrogant men, who would do his bidding by causing sin to flourish on the earth. Lucifer said that the men and women who would do the best work for him, by leading the most people to hell, would then be punished the most in hell, as their reward for doing his bidding while alive on earth. God also declared the following. All will understand, that those who are humble and peaceful, those that practice virtue, that suffer and yet forgive, are the followers of Christ and our sons. Nobody will be capable of entering by his own free will into our kingdom, unless he denies himself, and, taking up his cross, follows his chief and master, Matthew. 10.22. Our kingdom shall be composed of the perfect, who have legitimately labored and fought, persevering to the end. These will take part in the reign of our Christ, now begun and determined upon. For the accuser of his brethren has been cast down. The triumph of Christ is secured. To him belong exaltations and glory, since he is to wash and purify men with his blood. Therefore only he shall be worthy to open the book of the law of grace, Rev. 5-9. He is the way, the light, the truth and the life, John 14-6 through which men may come to me. He alone shall open the gates of heaven, he shall be the mediator, I Tim, 2-5, and the advocate of mortals, in him they will have a father, a brother, 1 John chapter 2 verse 1, and protector after having been freed from their accuser and persecutor. And the angels, who like true sons, 
have shared in the work of our salvation and power and have defended the reign of my Christ, shall likewise be honored and crowned through all the eternities of eternities in my presence. Adam and Eve In the next chapter of the book, the creation of Adam and Eve was hidden from Lucifer, who really believed that Eve was the woman in the vision. He thought that by causing her to sin, he would be crushing her before she could crush his head. He had no idea that Mary, born some 4,000 years later, would actually be the woman. The irony here is that the great deceiver of mankind was himself deceived by his own ego and pride.